It was early in the rainy season, and the crops in the village were struggling. The rain hadn't come when we needed it, and the people were worried. If we didn't get enough food from the fields, we wouldn't survive through the year. Everyone was talking about the harvest and what would happen if things didn't get better. My father, Baba Kofi, was one of the village elders, and he had seen bad seasons before. He always said, in tough times, we must help each other, or we'll fall apart. But Prince Oba didn't care about tough times. One morning, as the sun was rising behind the hills, a group of soldiers came into the village. They were dressed in bright colors, carrying weapons, and at the front of the group was the prince himself. He didn't visit our village often, and when he did, it was never for a good reason. People of the village! Oba shouted, his voice booming across the small square. I have come to collect what is owed to me. There was a heavy silence. Everyone knew what that meant. Every year, the prince demanded a share of the harvest, no matter how small or big it was. It was his tax, and we had to pay, even if we barely had enough to eat. Baba Kofi stepped forward, his face calm but his eyes worried. My prince, he began, bowing his head. This year has been hard. The rains have not been kind. Our harvest is small. We ask for mercy. Oba looked down from his horse, his eyes cold. Mercy, he repeated, almost laughing. Do you think your problems are my concern, old man? The harvest is mine by right. You will give me what I'm owed, or you will face the consequences. We all stood there, frozen. The fear was real, you could feel it in the air. People started whispering, some stepping back, afraid of what might happen next. The prince's soldiers stood ready, their hands gripping their weapons tightly, waiting for his command. Baba Kofi didn't move. My prince, he said slowly, choosing his words carefully, if you take from us now, we will not survive the year. There will be no food for the children, no food for the elders. We ask only for time. But Prince Oba wasn't listening. He had already made up his mind. You will give me the harvest, he said sharply, or I will take it by force. And then, something happened that I will never forget. Mama Eda, the oldest woman in the village, stepped forward. She had been silent the whole time, watching from the shadows, but now she moved into the light, her cane tapping the ground as she walked. Her face was wrinkled with age, but her eyes were sharp, and when she spoke, it was with the voice of someone who had lived through many seasons. Prince Oba, she said, her voice steady, there is a warning I must give you. My ancestors spoke of a time when a ruler, much like you, demanded more than his people could give. And for his greed, he lost everything. Oba narrowed his eyes. Old woman, is Pat, do you think you can scare me with your tales? But Mama Eda didn't back down. This is not a tale, she said firmly. It is a lesson. The earth sees everything, and when you take too much from it, it will take back. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day, you will pay for your greed. The village was silent. Everyone held their breath, waiting for what would happen next. Would the prince strike her down? Would he order his soldiers to destroy everything? But Oba just laughed, a deep, cruel sound that sent a chill through me. You dare speak to me of lessons, he sneered. I am the prince. I take what I want, and no old woman's curse will change that. He turned to his soldiers and waved his hand. Take the harvest, he commanded. And that's when it started. The wind, 
out of nowhere, picked up. Strong, like it was angry. It whipped through the village, blowing dust and dirt into the air, and the skies, once clear, began to darken. Mama Ada didn't say a word. She just stood there, her eyes on the prince, her face calm, like she knew something the rest of us didn't. I remember the look on Oba's face. For a moment, just a moment, he seemed unsure. The wind howled, and the skies grew darker still. The soldiers hesitated, looking to their prince for guidance, but he waved them on. Do as I say, he yelled, though his voice didn't carry the same strength as before. They moved toward the fields, but before they could take a single stalk of grain, something incredible happened, the wind became even stronger, howling like an unseen force had taken control of the air. Dust swirled everywhere, making it hard to see. The trees surrounding the village began to sway violently, their branches creaking under the pressure. The ground beneath our feet trembled, not enough to knock us over, but enough to make everyone stop in their tracks. The soldiers looked around, their eyes wide with fear. Even the bravest among them seemed unsure of what to do. They hesitated, their hands still reaching for the crops, but something was wrong, something bigger than all of us. It felt like the earth itself was warning them to stop. And then the first one fell. I didn't see it happen at first. One of the soldiers at the front of the group just dropped to his knees, clutching his chest. His face was twisted in pain, his eyes wide with panic. Then, another one collapsed, and another, each falling as though struck by some invisible force. Panic spread through the ranks, and before long, the soldiers were shouting to one another, backing away from the fields, their eyes darting around like they expected the ground to open up and swallow them whole. Prince Oba's horse bucked nervously, sensing something was wrong. But Oba was stubborn, still refusing to believe that anything could be out of his control. He sat tall in his saddle, looking down at the scene with anger and confusion. This is nothing, he yelled, though his voice didn't carry the same authority it had earlier. Get up. All of you, get up. But none of the soldiers could rise. Those who hadn't collapsed were backing away, their faces pale with fear. The wind howled louder, and above us, the dark clouds seemed to circle like vultures, blocking out the sun. I felt a tug on my arm. It was my father, Boba Kofi, pulling me back toward the safety of the huts. Stay away from them, he whispered urgently. Something evil is at work here. As we stepped back, I noticed Mama Eda, still standing calmly in the middle of the chaos. Her cane planted firmly in the ground, her eyes fixed on Prince Oba. It was as if the storm itself was happening around her, but not touching her. She looked at the prince, her voice cutting through the wind like a knife. I warned you, Prince Oba, she said, her words clear and deliberate. The earth gives, but it also takes. You have taken too much, and now it demands a price. For the first time, I saw fear in Oba's eyes. He yanked the reins of his horse, trying to turn it, but the animal was terrified, it's as wild with panic. The prince shouted, pulling harder, but the horse wouldn't move. It reared up on its hind legs, throwing Oba to the ground with a thud that echoed through the village. He scrambled to his feet, covered in dust, but the wind had grown so strong that he could barely stand. His eyes darted around, desperate for someone to help him, but no one moved. His soldiers were either lying on the ground or backing away in fear, and the villagers were too afraid to get involved. Even the bravest of us didn't dare step forward. Mama Eda took a step toward him, her eyes never leaving his. 
Do you feel it now, Prince Oba? She asked, her voice soft but filled with power. Do you feel the weight of your greed? This is only the beginning. Oba stumbled back, his face pale and sweaty. Stop this, he shouted, his voice shaking. I command you. But Mama Eda didn't stop. The wind roared louder, and the skies above us began to rumble with thunder, though there had been no sign of a storm before. The air was thick, like it was pressing down on all of us, and the ground trembled beneath our feet. Oba's eyes darted around, wild with panic. You, you did this, he accused, pointing at Mama Eda. This is your doing. Mama Eda shook her head slowly. This is not my doing, Prince, she said quietly. It is yours. And then, without warning, the wind stopped. Everything went still. The dark clouds hung heavy above us, but the wind was gone, replaced by an eerie, unnatural silence. Even the trees had stopped swaying, as though the entire village was holding its breath, waiting to see what would happen next. Oba stood frozen, his chest heaving, his eyes wide with confusion and fear. He looked around, as if expecting someone to explain what was happening, but no one spoke. The silence was thick, almost suffocating. And then, from the depth of the forest that bordered our village, came a sound. At first, it was faint, like a low hum, but it grew louder, more distinct. It was the sound of footsteps, many footsteps, moving through the trees. The villagers looked at one another in confusion, but no one moved. We all stood there, listening, waiting. And then we saw them. Figures, emerging from the trees, moving slowly but purposefully toward the village. There were dozens of them, men, women, and children, all dressed in simple, tattered clothes. Their faces were pale, their eyes dark and sunken. They looked like they had walked a great distance, their bodies thin and worn, but there was something else about them, something wrong. They weren't alive. We had heard stories of the ancestors, spirits that roamed the earth when the balance was disturbed, but none of us had ever seen them. Yet here they were, walking toward us with hollow eyes, their presence heavy in the air. Mama Eda turned to face them, her expression calm, but the rest of us were frozen in terror. I could feel my father's grip tighten on my arm, but he didn't move. No one did. The ancestors stopped at the edge of the village, their eyes fixed on one person. Prince Oba. He stood there, trembling, unable to move or speak. The silence stretched on, and I realized, with a cold dread, that the ancestors were waiting for something. Waiting for Oba's answer. Prince Oba finally found his voice, though it came out as a shaky whisper. What do you want from me? he asked, his bravado gone. The figures didn't respond with words, instead, they moved closer, their hollow eyes locking onto his, as if searching his soul. A heavy silence fell over the village again, and I could feel the tension crackling in the air. Then Mama Eda stepped forward. They come to collect what you owe, she said firmly, her voice cutting through the fear. You have taken from the land and its people. Now, the ancestors demand payment. Oba's face paled further, his eyes darting around, desperate for an escape. I, I am a prince, he stammered. I am not afraid of you. The ancestors continued to advance, their presence overwhelming. I could feel the fear radiating from everyone around me, but Mama Eda stood strong, unyielding. They do not fear you, Prince Oba, she said quietly. You have caused pain and suffering, and now it is time for you to face the consequences of your actions. 
As the ancestors reached the edge of the village, the wind picked up again, swirling around us like a storm. Oba stumbled back, his bravado crumbling. No. Please. I will change. I can be better. But it was too late. In that moment, the figures moved in unison, surrounding him. A gust of wind swept through, and I saw Oba's expression shift from anger to sheer terror. His mouth opened, but no sound came out. It was as if the very air had been sucked from his lungs. Suddenly, the ground shook again, and the dark clouds above churned ominously. The ancestors raised their hands, and in an instant, the wind howled louder than ever, enveloping Oba in a whirlwind of dust and shadows. He tried to scream, but it was lost in the chaos. The villagers watched in stunned silence as the prince was lifted off the ground, the wind twisting around him, pulling him away from us, away from the village. As quickly as it started, it stopped. The storm calmed, the ancestors faded back into the trees, and Oba was gone, vanished into the darkness, never to be seen again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting stories. Thank you.